We have some white cards. Mm -hmm. Fell at our retreat, which is three and a white for an enchantment that has landfall. Okay, what's the landfall do? Whatever land comes into play, pick one of the following. Make a 2-2 cat beast. Ooh, cat beast. Where have I heard about making two twos when lands come into play? I wonder. Or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Go wide, then make them big. And it gives vigilance till the end of the turn. Oh, I missed the vigilance thing. Because why wouldn't you? We need to give it more. It's awkward, right? Because you look at it and you're like, I mean, Field of the Dead was so good, but yeah. you didn't have to tap four lands sideways. The last couple of sets have also like proven that four mana do nothing enchantments can be playable and ban worthy. But this doesn't give you your mana back. Well, I mean, how many landfall triggers do you need before it get, gave you your mana back, though? Fair. Probably, like, three? Because, like, vanilla two twos. Or I guess if you go, like, two, 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 make them big. Or what if you went, like, one drop, two drop, one drop, and a two drop, this thing, and then, like, next turn, Fable Passage, and just two counters, and Vigilance, and everything? And also, yeah, like, I mean- if your one drops and two drops had some sort of landfall benefit yeah i mean it could just be it might be like a go wide card that we're reading as like it's supposed to be its own engine it could Mm -hmm. just be like a payoff for like you go like one drop you make some tokens on two you make some tokens on three you play this and then you just like land sack something land or conclave mentor thank you all the counters we also have some like enchantment support from theros right don't we still have the cost reducer the white cost reducer or is that just auras uh what is oh transit whatever yeah the one two flyer i think it's enchantments well i meant the two mana two two that gets a counter oh that's uh that was in core 20. oh was it so we're losing that yeah that guy starfield mystic yeah no there's the the well the one two yeah but i don't know if it's just auras or not yeah i think that one's just auras we have legion angel Mm mm-hmm which is a unique design. Yeah, it kind of, it asks some weird questions, right? It does, so. Well, let's talk about what's the card do first. Yeah. I'm taking all James' cards. Uh, yeah. Two white, wait, <laughs> they, they have white symbols on them. It's fine, he doesn't care. Two That's white, right. white for a 4-3. Uh-huh. Angel warrior, because why not? Why not? It has flying. Mm-hmm. When it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a card you own from out, uh, you own, ugh. you may reveal a card you own named Legion Angel from outside the game, put it into your hand. Okay. So you so, draw it from your sideboard. Right. So it's a four mana, four, three flyer that draws a four mana, four, three flyer that draws a four mana, four, three flyer that draws a four mana, four, three flyer. If you draw the first one. So like that, I think that's the question you're talking about. Do you play three and like the first one is great? Right. Because it draws you one. Uh, or do you play one and then hope to like hit that one and then draw, slowly draw three? And like it might, maybe the answer is two. So you like- just split the difference. Yeah. Just so like you have a higher chance of drawing it, but then you also have the a chance to like chain them together. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know, like any like good tutors that let you find that one that you might want to run anyway. Like we have Grim Tutor, right? Yeah. I mean, that's not a great tutor, but I don't think there's a creature one, is there? Well, Grim Tutor's any card. Grim Tutor's any card, but there's not just like an Eladon Reese call. No, I don't think so. But we could just like run or something like that. So yeah, I think it's an interesting like it presents an interesting deck building decision because it like each sideboard slots. How much is a sideboard slot worth? Uh, any companion. Any companion. This is true. It's worth a, a three mana, three two that you draw every single game. Cyborg slots aren't worth much as we have discovered. <laughs> but like when you're not going to draw it every game, I mean, maybe it changes. Maybe, you know, if you're playing against a control deck, maybe you go to like one. Because if you draw that one and get to resolve it, then you you're just, always going to have a backup. You're always going to have this constant chain of threats. Mm-hmm. But I guess aggro, maybe it's three and you play one because you just need to like draw your four, three flyer to have yep. a block. So maybe that like gives a little bit more pause to how you build, how you sideboard, because now you have like, well, is this a matchup that I want three or that I want one? Yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought about that, that you can kind of change your distribution post board. Yeah, because there's nothing that says it has to be it stay the same. So you right. can, like, oh, I think this is a matchup where I want more or less. So it's an an interesting thing to think about. So now Podcast Dad does not have to put this card in, but I was busy all weekend and James uh, made the list. 
And so he already <laughs> he already readily admitted colors he doesn't play did, got short shrift. So I want to throw a, another white card on here. Okay. And that's Skyclave Apparition. So that's okay, one white that? white for a three uh, for a two two. So one white for a two two. Okay. Enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non land non token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost four or less. And when it leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner gets an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the converted mana of the exiled card. And it's a spirit, right? Uh, Like Bant and blue-white spirits in older formats, we're playing uh, Deputy of Attention that doesn't have any synergies with Right. Uh, with spirits. So it's just kind of better deputy attention? Yeah, I mean, it, it's different, right? It doesn't get all the copies of a thing. Yeah. But, like, if your opponent plays a three-mana Teferi, and then you eat it with oh, it, they don't yeah, get their Teferi cool. back, they get a 3-3, three, three, right? If they play a Tarmogoyf, yeah. and you get it with this, they get a 2-2. Two, two. They don't get a Tarmogoyf back. That's pretty good. And it's something that, like, again, synergizes with spirit. So if you mm-hmm. have all these other spirit synergies, right? Like, I think Rattle Chains can only give Hexproof to a spirit, right? So if you, like, play this, and then you get to, like, have a Rattle Chains up to defend it, it's something that you couldn't do with Deputy. Mm-hmm. So I think by the fact that it's a spirit, probably pushes it into, like, older formats. It might. Where, like, you know, getting the Collected Company into a removal spell uh, that also gets, like, all your Lord buffs. Right. is probably pretty decent. That was just one that I was like, oh, this one might was probably going to see play in at least Modern Spirits and at least Pioneer Spirits as well. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that card at all. It's I, got mean, I, knew white, it, I knew it existed, but... It's got white mana symbols on it, man. You're like, mm, it's rough. Well, it, I don't know. Like, both of the white cards that we've talked about so far, white cards that have enough value in them that I could see me playing them, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like... They're doing something different and unique. Yeah. There's been a million Banisher Priests right. in Fiend Hunters. Like, this is just a Fiend Hunter that has, like... A relevant creature type. A relevant creature type and does something a little different. It doesn't give the thing back. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that it just looks the same. <laughs>